Good day. In this session, we will be discussing how to evaluate resources that would be appropriate for your teaching and your organization. So for evaluating tools, Tony Bates created the ACTIONS model in 1995. ACTIONS stands for Access, Cost, Teaching and Learning, Interactivity and Ease of Use, Organizational Issues, Novelty, and Speed. But in 2003, uh, Bates revised the actions model to sections model, which now stands for students, ease of use, cost, teaching and learning, interactivity, organizational issues, networking, and security and privacy. So why did he switch from actions to sections? A used to stand for access, which now became students because he thought that it would be best to be evaluating the student demographics which would include access. I used to be interactivity and ease of use, and so he separated them because he thought that ease of use should have its own category. N used to stand for novelty, which he put inside ease of use. He thought that it should just be included in ease of use. So N now stands for networking, and S stood for speed, which he put inside ease of use too. And so S now stands for security and privacy. C, T, and O remain the same. They still stand for cost, teaching and learning, and organizational issues. So let's discuss each of the categories. For students, yeah, you have to take into consideration your student demographics, their age, uh, where do they live? How are they going to access those tools? How quick do they learn technology? So those are the things that you look into when it comes to students. With ease of use, you have to look into how easy the tool is to learn for both students and teachers. Is it reliable? Does it break down too much? Does it require too much maintenance? And you also have to take into account how much tech support it needs. For cost, you don't just think of um, buying the tool. There's also the cost of equipment, the cost of maintenance, the cost of the staff to maintain, a cost of, to develop your tool, a cost to deliver your tool, and most importantly, the time it takes for, your, for the teacher to uh, learn the tool and develop and deliver the tool. For teaching and learning, you take into account forms of teaching, uh, con the content that you're going to teach and the skills you, that you would want your students to learn, and the assessment strategies. With interaction and interactivity, you have to take into account the learner-content interaction, learner-learner interaction, and learner-teacher interaction and also the quality of each of the three interactions. For organizational issues, you have to take into account organizational support where um, does, does your organization, how much does your organization support you in using this tool? Will they give you enough tech support or do you have to do this all on your own? For networking, you have to take into account social media issues and um, how much collaboration the students can, take, can uh, have from this tool. For security and privacy, uh, you may have to make sure that the tool keeps their students and teachers' data secure and also that these uh, security and privacy policies are in compliance with the institutional policies and ethical guidelines. This ends our session in evaluating tools and I hope this helps you in choosing the tools for your teaching.